My yeah. bad. I don't know what happened. No, nah, you good. No worries. No worries at all. Um, first of all, thank you. Thank you for having on this call. I know like I hit you out the blue, but <laughs> it's okay, of course. No problem. Yeah, I appreciate it. And um I just wanna ask you, you know, about you know, your experience right now and you know, were you were you overseas, right? You was I was. I left Poland to come back home uh right before playoffs. Okay. Yeah, like Walk me through that experience. Like, how was it when you got the news and everything? Um, honestly, it was kind of scary because um, at like three in the morning, my teammate Kalia Copper, she plays for Chicago Sky. She called me, and I was dead asleep. She was like, "Jazz, we got to go now." Yeah. And for a minute, I'm like, "Wait, like, am I dreaming? Is she really calling me, telling me that I got to like leave the country and go home now?" She said, "Trump put out a travel ban." and no one's gonna be able to come back into the States. So this was before everything was clarified that it was only nine US citizens. So at three in the morning to like eight in the morning, we were just up looking for flights, scrambling. We both have dogs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not being able to just jump on a flight because we gotta make sure they can get on, it was pretty stressful. Um, things calmed down a few hours later and, and we were able to leave out, I wanna say the 12th, March 12th, we were really, within 48 hours, we were gone. Dang. Yep, we had one more game left in the regular season. We were in third place, you know, picked a favored, one of the teams favored to win the championship. So it was, yeah, yeah. it was a situation. Yeah. Yeah, I seemed like, I talked to a lot of my friends that came back, and they, it was like, we were doing so well, and then it just got cut off. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so like you had to self quarantine when you got back. Like, have you been able to see your family or friends? Or um, for a full two weeks, I did self quarantine. I didn't see any of my family, um, none of my friends. I had like I barely left the house. I needed to get like some stuff because I've been overseas for so long that I, you know, didn't have enough stuff in my house to kind of just be in there for fourteen days. Yeah. But once I had everything no contact in the house so no symptoms at all and no you know like that was the scary part is that you can you know be a carrier and not show the symptoms so once that like news of that started circulating around i knew for sure i wasn't going to be around my family so um after that time then on weekends i started seeing my niece my brother and his wife but i'm still pretty distant from my parents to this day just they're older um, they're scared. It's kind of hard seeing them like this because, you know, they're fine. They're, they're healthy. They're in the house, but you know, they're actually scared to go outside and it's just kind of sad. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It's, it's definitely scary right now for all ages. Like at mm -hmm. one point they said there's older people, but it's like everybody now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I definitely, I wanted to ask you like, how are you doing like at home? Like, is it killing you or are you enjoying <laughs> it? I have my days. Most days I feel like I'm okay. I'm enjoying it. I'm staying busy. And then some days I feel like I'm just in like shutdown mode. I'm in the bed. I take my dog, I have two dogs. So I take my dogs out, come back in, like limited contact on the phone. I just feel like I just need to sit and be alone in the moment of what's actually going on in the world. But, um, but that's rare. Most of the days it's been like a month and a half for me now. So most days I just wake up in the morning, I work out. Um, that's kind of difficult, but I get that done. So I'm working out from like, I don't know, nine to 12 between like, uh, workouts that my coaches have sent me and my own thing. Okay. And then after that, I find stuff to keep me busy. I'm cooking, um, yeah. you know, blogging or, you know, just staying on social media, doing lives or like interviews throughout the day. So stuff to just keep me occupied. Yeah. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, I want to ask you about your career. You know, I've been following you since uh, I'm, I'm young, I'm like 26. I know I look sick. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Oh, I know. It's okay. <laughs> You're older than me. Like, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I've been following you since you were at Duke. And uh, I went to George Mason. So you're from Virginia, right? Yeah. Yeah, so... I just want to ask you about, like, your career, just seeing how you, like, progress, um, you, you know, went all the way to WA and uh, even overseas. Like, how, like, just talking about, you know, just living the dream, really. Like, you know, how does that feel? Um, 
now that I get this question so much because yeah, I am sure. my, no, but I'm just saying I'm going into my 10th year as a pro 10th year in the WNBA and you know now when I look back on it 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 really does I'm appreciating it for what it was because at the time like going through each year and each uh you know any adversity or in the the highs the lows you kind of just adapt you get used to what's going on and you just you know kind of go on autopilot uh but having to really reflect and think back on my experience you know i came out of the i came out of virginia best player in the state um still want to you know about to be inducted into the hall of fame of virginia for you know my accomplishments here so really yeah. love basketball high on life feeling good about myself and all that you know me and my family have worked for to put me in that position to be able to go to duke um get to duke and of course it's that curve you know that adjustment um, but still pretty much, you know, what I had hoped for coming into a position where I get out of it what I put into it. So working hard, adjusting to school, adjusting to on the court, um, stepping up to the challenges, you know, it was, that's the first time that you really challenge your body to do different things that you've never done before. So um, went through Duke, had a good career there, didn't make it to a Final Four or won a national championship, which was a big reason why I wanted to go there and be part of bringing that first one to the school. But all in all, still had a pretty good experience. Yeah. Got to the W, you know, it's funny, it's draft week now, um, drafts on the 17th and, you know, everybody's posting the pictures and just talking about like what that moment was like to be drafted. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's a feeling I don't think I'll ever have again, you know, just something that you really dreamed of since you were a kid actually coming true, coming to life. But it's also some of the like, that might have been the most pressure I ever felt too, because you know you hear your your name called and you get that relief, mm -hmm. but then you start to think about what did I just sign up for? Like, what am I really about to get into? I'm about to play against the best players in the world, mm -hmm. um, you know, just at the highest level. And while it's you know something to be proud of, it's a humbling experience too, because you get into that training camp and it's just like, you know, you're half in awe, half starstruck, half like. Yeah. you know want to assert yourself and prove that you deserve to be there so I just I remember my rookie year like it was yesterday especially being able to play at home you know I did my first two seasons in DC we yeah. were terrible but <laughs> it was still um, a really good experience um, yeah <laughs> and then you know went on to play in Atlanta made it to the finals uh got swept against Minnesota and now I've been in Connecticut, this will be my sixth year. And this is, you know, finally the place that I built my career, made a name for myself, really yeah. feel like I got a family here. So um, I love it in Connecticut. Yeah, that's dope. That's real dope. You know, um, you know, all of you. Uh, I used yeah. To, yeah, I used to work some of his basketball camps. Oh, okay. Yeah, Does he know I'm talking to you? I'm going to have to tell him. I talked yeah. to him. Yeah, I had him on uh, my Thursday call. I have like this oh. So, he I need to go back and watch them all. Yeah, I got a <laughs> lot. I got a lot. <laughs> but, yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Bowie, Maryland. Oh, you from here? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's about probably like an hour from me. Yeah, I yeah. went to um, Bishop McNamara High School. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, w W C A C. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what are you doing now though did you did you keep who you say you're 26 so you you've been out for a little bit yeah like four years so okay. i went overseas for like like three four years okay so i was in like iceland and i went to like luxembourg which is like super tiny and yeah and, uh, <laughs> i went to australia so okay but that's cool yeah you know you still in the hooping or are you kind of trying to transition out of it now on the other side yeah, like I was actually getting ready to play in the league. Um, okay. Like I was about to get ready to, you know, go. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. You know, it's that's life right now. I can't, I can't tell you all the rumors that I'm hearing about sports in general, but especially the WNBA, just the uncertainty of everything. You know, um, everybody's definitely working hard for there to be a league this summer. Like that is the goal. You know, whatever it takes, we, we definitely want to make that happen. But, you know, when the whole world is shut down, you know, it's kind of hard to, you know, put so much emphasis into basketball. Right. Um, so we definitely understand it, but. I'm hearing some 
I'm hearing some crazy things like, you know, sports not, not returning until next year, which would be crazy. So, yeah, right. so like, what if, like, what if that happens? Like, I, I want to, you know, try and be positive, but like, mm-hmm. what if there's no WBA this summer? Like, then what? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. I mean, it's really hard to picture it. That's been the last 10 years for me, like just routine, like clockwork, overseas, WBA, overseas, WBA. But, you know, for me, being older, I feel like this is kind of a point in my career where I'm not ready to retire. You know, I'm healthy. I'm still playing good basketball. But I've been thinking about my life after basketball, making that transition into retirement. And, you know, this is kind of given me an opportunity to do some of those things, network in that way, kind of tap into those resources. So for me, that's what it would be. It would be a full out, you know, not rebranding, but like, you know, finding myself off the court, what, what can I do? Plant some seeds. And, you know, then once basketball comes back, trying to do those things at the same time, but also, you know, really setting myself up just to go from basketball to something else. So that's what it looks like for me, but I don't know. Yeah. I still got to find an income, you know, like that's my job. I'm full time, full all year round. So still got to find a way to bring some money in. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure it's all going to work out. Yeah. What about you? What you got going on? This video. So that's one thing. I'm a video editor. Um, okay. So even when I was overseas, I worked for like local newspapers or, you know, just like small businesses that need uh, marketing. And um, I just create content. So Nice. Yeah. I've been trying to do some footage. You can make some highlight tapes. Keep my game alive while I'm not playing. Hey, I got you. (laughs) Yeah, that would be dope. And I pay you for it. Like you don't do nothing for free right now. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. I appreciate some prices. Let people know. Like I'm good at what I do. So, you know, I understand the times, but yeah. That's what you got. Exactly. Yeah. No, I feel that. I, I definitely appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I know you get asked this question a lot, but, um, you know, for the youngins that look up to you, you know, they see you playing national championship. Like, I mean, you had a great season, by the way. Like, that was, that was crazy last year. Too. Thank you. Um, the, the kids that look up to you, you know, what would you tell them they want to be in your shoes one day? Um, I would tell them – if they're truly passionate about basketball um, and they're doing everything that they're supposed to do, like, you know, checking everything off the checklist, working extra, studying the game, um, using all their resources to just get better talent wise, skill wise, um, just never lose your confidence. I feel like it's easier said than done, but all the adversity that I've been through along the way, whether it's game by game, you know, season by season, Uh, each level from, you know, middle school to high school, high school to college, college to pro, uh, that is the thing that is constantly challenged. And I feel like it's ultimately what makes you successful or not. And um, it's hard. I I can count. There's countless times I had to, you know, pick myself up and, you know, go back to go back to the foundation of it all. Like remind myself why I play and I play because I love the game. I play because I'm competitive. I play because I love, um, you know, I love everything that sports has to offer, you know, from the relationships, the, um, the discipline, all the values that you learn from just, you know, being involved with sports. So uh, you can't put everything just on performance. Everything's not performance based. That's a surefire way to have your confidence shot. Um, you got to find a So that's what I would tell them. That's real. That's real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, appreciate that. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Your time, you know, you don't have to do this, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm sorry it took me so long to get back to you. That whole little, you know, messages that go to requests kind of messed me up a little bit. <laughs> but I'm happy that I was able to do this. And I hope you continue doing it and that it uh, goes well for you. If you, you need me to kind of reach out to anybody that you might have in mind, just let me know. Yeah, definitely. I, I was going to ask you that, like, um, any teammates that be open to it, I'd love to. Yeah, I will. You know, I definitely can hit everybody up and see who's who's open to it. And as long as it's somewhere along the lines of this, I can let them know what it would be like and, and see if they want to. So. Definitely. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> cool. I, I'll send you the footage. And, um, yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, no problem. You take care of yourself. You stay healthy. 
All right, you too. All right, bye.